In this episode, we take a look at an armed robbery in 1988 in Lancashire. This episode, we left a viewer's choice. And my God, you've picked a good one. The first part will be the reconstruction and the second part, the police investigation afterwards. Our first case is one that's already made the headlines and not surprisingly. It brought a town centre to a standstill, involved a kidnapping and a siege and the theft of over half a million pounds. A family was terrorised, though as you'll see they showed remarkable courage. Seven weeks ago today, on Thursday the 15th of September, police were called to Fishergate in the heart of Preston when the National Westminster Bank there failed to open. They knew that the staff were in there and when they found that they couldn't communicate with them, they brought in marksmen, they cleared the area, and for three hours, they lay in wait. But the robbers had already fled. Our reconstruction begins the evening before the raid as the bank manager, Roger Ball, left work. He noticed that though it was a staff car park, someone had left a red Ford Escort van beside his car. When you were, I'll blow your head off. What are you, okay, you Mr. Ball? Yes, yes, sir. Are you the senior manager of the NatWest Bank? Yes, the top man. Yes, yes, sir. So was. It's loaded, right? Over to the van. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's down, right? Down. One word. This pump was recovered by the police and was found to be faulty. But when the car was later found, the tyre was well inflated. So this blue Sierra must have been taken to a garage. Morecambe Illuminations, 30 miles from Preston. Despite the blindfold, Roger realised he was being driven to a public car park beside Morecambe Golf Course. It's not far from his home. The red van and another car, perhaps his own Sierra, stayed here for over half an hour. By now, his family would expect him to be home. Haven't you had enough? Dad's late. I'm glad we didn't have to wait for him to come home before we had our tea. Yes, he is late. Right, stand up. OK, come over to the left. And you're getting in a passenger seat if you want. Come on. Come on, sit down on the front seat. Mind your head. In you go. And the legs. In you go. Police have reason to believe that Roger was next driven here to Sandside Caravan Site at Bolton Le Sands, just north of Morecambe. Were you here on Wednesday the 14th? There's an unusual old fashioned payphone. In. Mrs. Ball? Yes. Jean, it's me. Roger. Now don't panic, love. Stay calm. Now don't what? ring the police. What? Just what? listen to I me. Mean, what, what, what's going on? Do exactly as I say. Jean was told to open the door to the patio. Do as you told and you won't get hurt, all right? I'm gonna stay nice and calm till your husband gets home. All right, come in. Roger, Dad. Chief, no. Vanessa, are you both no. all right? right. Yes. Stop. Sit down. Everything OK? Yeah. Now, we're going to be here till about 4 o'clock this morning, so we might as well make ourselves nice and comfortable. You don't do anything stupid, and you do what you're told, everybody's going to be fine. 
No one will get hurt. I, uh, I don't suppose the chance of a cup of tea is a Mrs. Ball. And now tonight's main news again. Hurricane Gilbert with 200 mile an hour winds has hit Mexico and is heading for Texas. Leaving us well alone. That's the line. I had a, a poor upbringing, but I didn't resort to crime. Mom. Well, it's absolutely true. Why should you have easy money just because you think you have the right to do that? You're underprivileged and all that. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. One of the intruders stole both Rogers and Jean's cash cards. And from bank records, it's known he took them to this dispenser on the front at Morecambe. It was 10 o'clock. Might you have seen him? Now, Rog. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do in the bank. Roger was astonished to be told that the gang could get into the locked bank without him. But they needed his help to persuade his colleagues to open up the vault. If he didn't cooperate, his wife and daughter would be killed. What happened next, they all found terrifying. All right. They were driven off, locked in darkness, in Jean's silver Ford Orion and in Roger's blue Sierra. They finished up beside the bank in a deserted shop. Jean and Vanessa, blindfolded, had no idea oh. where they were. Roger guessed roughly where he was, but he didn't know his wife and daughter were in the room below him. You all right, Vanessa? Roger had been instructed to go to work to round up all his staff and tell them to cooperate. Now, there's nothing, nothing you can do about it. No alarms, nothing. They've got Jean and Vanessa. There's a, there's a robber already in the bank and there's one outside. I must ask you, please, stay very, very... Right, quiet. you! Don't move! Do exactly as you're told! Stay where you are! If I get caught, I get 20 years. But take one of you with me, I get another five. Watcher, let him in. OK, who you got, Rob? Everybody all right, you say calm. Wait, who's got the keys for the fault? Come on, the keys for the fault! Vault, he needs vault. Vault, he wants to keep the vault. OK, over here, come on. Come on, on up! At just after half past nine, two workmen arrived for a routine check on the alarms. Strange, the bank's still shut. I'll just nip out and see if there's a space. Right, Andy. He saw a silver Orion backing up the passageway beside the bank. When he walked past the Orion to find a parking space, he saw a man loading bags from the side door of the bank into the boot of the car. All of you, come on, come on, into the fault, come on. Quickly, keep moving. Come on. Meanwhile, at the front, a crowd of customers had gathered. The bank was now 15 minutes late in opening. This is Garden Street. All right, come on. This woman almost certainly heard the robbers exchanging cars. The silver Orion was later found abandoned in Preston Station car park. The end of Garden Street opens out towards the station. Usually the way is blocked by bollards. Sometime earlier that morning, they'd been removed. Mr. Worms, it must be said that no gratuitous violence was used, but it was a miracle no one had a heart attack. There were so many people involved. Nat West, so insistent this isn't going to happen again, one of their staff kidnapped like this. They've offered the monumental reward, £50,000, which is a really big one by yes. UK standards. It's the largest reward that I'm aware of, certainly in the north of England. And in addition to that, it's 10% of the proceeds recovered will be paid to anyone with information leading to the arrest of the person responsible. OK, now what do we know about the people? We've got a video fit of one of them. That was the chap who was seen putting money 
into the boot of the car. Describe him to us, yeah. can you? He is offender number three, uh, and as you say, he, he took the money out of the bank and into the boot of the Orion. He's described as tan white male, five foot nine, he's got black short hair, he's wearing a moustache and wearing smart light brown suit. And suspects one and two, they were um, fairly similar. They were fairly small, weren't they? Five foot seven or so? Yes, they're thought to be uh, about 25 years of age, less than five foot seven. OK, one of them had a speech defect. I don't know if, if you noticed, uh, he, he said that, um, White, who's got the keys to the fault? As though he can't say uh, R in right and he can't say V in vault. That's right. It's an impediment which is thought to affect the Vs and the Rs. But they do have what is described as soft Merseyside accents. Now, this foot pump is important. You need to find anyone at all who's ever bought a foot pump like this from Holford's that hasn't worked. They're That's taking right. it back. These were made by Cameron Price in Birmingham uh, from December, uh, November 1987. Um, it's sold only through the Holford uh, retailer's shops. Uh, it's known to be defective. It has been returned by a legitimate purchaser and then subsequently stolen. So if you were a legitimate purchaser of a Halford foot pump that didn't work after that period in 87, end of 87, and took it back to a Halford shop, please give us a call. The Red Fort Escort van... We've got a picture of it here. It's remarkably clean. It looks as though it had been washed prior to the robbery or kept in a garage. Now, that's distinctive. Tell us why people might remember having seen that. It, it's red in colour. It's got a big registration on a five-year-old vehicle. It's got a black roof rack, as you can see, and a hole has been punched into the side, which, when we found it, was covered by adhesive tape. Right, that little hole, that spy hole that they cut in, is, is perhaps something that somebody might have, might have noticed in it. There's also a, a white van. Now, tell us the significance of that. Yes, this white van with shower power on the side was seen about 25 minutes past six on the morning of the robbery itself in uh, the Asda car park, which is at the bottom of Garden Street, possibly only about 10 yards away from where the bollards were removed from. Right, it's, it's called a, a Luton-type van. We're not interested in people telling us about shower power. We know that's of no relationship to, to the vehicle. Yes. There was a lot of heavy money, so two and a half hundredweight was taken in coins. Um, yes. Like two and a half sacks of cement. Right. 11,000 pounds in pound and 50 pence pieces uh, amounts to two and a half hundredweight, and that is a lot of money, a right. lot of weight. Right. Well, if you can help recover any of the money, there's a big reward. If you can help convict any of the men, there's a huge reward. If you have any information, here's the number to ring. Oh, one. As bank manager Roger Ball left work at usual time at 6pm on September the 14th, 1988, he was about to be thrust into the, one of the most dramatic robberies in Lancashire's history. Roger Ball was kidnapped by two hooded gunmen, gagged and blindfolded before being driven to a phone box in Bolton the Sands. He was forced to phone his wife Jean and instruct her to let himself and his abductors into their Morecambe home. No doubt at the height of the concern was the little girl Vanessa, then only 13 years old, who was present throughout the terrifying ordeal. The family faced an agonising overnight wait, chaperoned by the mass robbers, who nonchalantly helped themselves to apples and oranges, devouring every part of the snack, including the cores and the peel. It was probably a detail that most victims in the horrific situation would glance over, but it proved to be a key in solving the case. The ruthless armed criminals kept Vanessa and her mum hostage, but forced her dad to open up as usual around 8.30am. As each member of staff arrived at the bank, they were also taken hostage. Eventually, 62 workers were held at gunpoint, whilst the gang stole the money from the vault. Throughout the 30-minute operation, one kept his finger on the trigger of his gun, watching over the staff as cash and foreign currency and travellers' checks were grabbed. Around half a million pounds was stolen, including two and a half hundred whiter coins. Mr Ball was instructed to tell the staff that if they alerted police or failed to assist the robbers, his family would be harmed. It was a meticulously planned raid. The villains had even dug up bollards outside the Preston railway station to help them with their getaway to avoid the main street. When the alarm was first raised, police surrounded the wrong NatWest branch in the confusion. The crime quickly made national headlines as a hunt for the robbers got underway. 60 to 80 police officers were enlisted to investigate the challenging case, which happened at a time when there was no DNA, CCTV or telephone evidence available to the team. 
and for the first few weeks, their efforts appeared to be fruitless. Three men were believed to have taken part in the raid, but only one was ever convicted. There was an extraordinary breakthrough that led to the arrest of a Merseyside man, Leonard Len Newsham. A street bobby who worked at Newsham's neighbourhood in Liverpool raised the alarm. He had read a crime report that referred to the strange way of eating a whole fruit and their Merseyside accent. One of the criminals also had a speech impediment. He remembered speaking to Newsham and another man called Jimmy Gibson in the street and watching as they ate a whole orange including the peel. Lancashire police had their two suspects but two months after the raid, James Gibson, who was 23 years old, was shot in the head and found dead in the street, still with his hands in his pocket, in a gangland-style slay. Police have always believed that Gibson was Newsham's accomplice. The third man has never been traced. Newsham was then spoken to by Lancashire police about the death, but unknown to the force, most side police's undercover surveillance team was watching when he left Preston Police Station. They followed him to Liverpool to the grounds of Hazaka Lee Hospital and watched him dig a package up. They pounced on him. The package had banknotes in it. They were fingerprinted and contained prints from staff at NatWest in Preston. A further package was found containing two balaclavas linked to fibres found in their vehicle, which had been abandoned in a hotel car park in Morecambe. In November 1989, Len Newsham, 24 years old, emphatically Liverpool, was jailed for 13 years for his part in the raid. Only £6,900 of the half a million haul had been recovered when he was caught. Two years later, four people were charged with handling the proceeds of robbery after police recovered £140,000 in a dawn raid on a house in Fleetwood. Ex-plumber John Hay, then 44 years old, of Garfield Street, Fleetwood, Newsham's girlfriend, Sharon Crawford, 22 years old, of Elstead Road, Liverpool. An engineer, Desmond Penny, of Ronald's Way, Thornton, Merseyside, admitted handling cash and travellers' cheques. The trio had taken part in elaborate plot to divert the proceeds to two Irish bank accounts in Dublin. John Hay, known to the underworld as Scotch John, was sentenced to four and a half years in prison in November 1991 for laundering some of the haul by opening five separate bank accounts, while the others got suspended jail sentences. He went to the USA on his release, but in 2010 pleaded guilty at a court in Nevada, attempting to smuggle a kilo of cocaine into Britain, and was told he would serve between 10 and 25 years. Len Newsham did not learn his lesson either, he was on home from leave from Sudbury Jail in Derbyshire when he committed a raid on the home of a businessman and his family. He was given an additional 12 years. <laughs>